I'm back, friends. In our last video, I showed you how to debug and deploy .NET apps on ARM devices like Raspberry Pi. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the pins on the device to control external devices. I'll be using a Raspberry Pi, but remember the concepts are the same for other ARM devices too. This row of pins is called the General Purpose Input Output or GPIO header. As the name implies, these pins have a variety of uses. They can be used to control external devices, read sensor input, and more. There's a pinout diagram on the Raspberry Pi website that shows the function of each pin. If you're using a different device, the manufacturer probably publishes a similar diagram. To start simple, I'm going to show you what I consider to be the IoT equivalent of Hello World, that is, blinking an LED. Before I start though, let me introduce you to my friend, the breadboard. It's a tool for prototyping circuits, and I'll be using it a lot in these videos. The breadboard is organized into rows and columns called strips. These strips on the edges provide a continuous connection over the length of the breadboard. They're usually color-coded for positive and ground as they're used to supply power for the circuit. The socket strips toward the middle of the breadboard allow components to be connected together without soldering. For example, a pin plugged into row 1 anywhere between column A and E is connected to any other pin on that same strip. On the other side of the divider, the strip located at columns F through J works the same way. This same pattern applies to all the other rows too. I could connect components directly to my Raspberry Pi, but I like to use a breadboard because it enables rapid prototyping. To make it even easier, I'll use a GPIO breakout board like this. When combined with a ribbon cable, it connects the Pi's GPIO pins to the breadboard and it includes handy labels for each pin. Let me get this all connected. There you go! Now I'm ready to build my LED circuit. The components I'll need are jumper wires, a 5mm LED, and a resistor. The tutorial in the .NET IoT docs says to use a 330 ohm resistor, but I'll be using a 1K ohm resistor to make the LED appear less overpowering on camera. I'll start by connecting one of the ground pins to the negative rail on the edge of the breadboard. Then I'll connect pin 18 to an empty row. On that same row, I'll connect the longer of the LED's two legs. This is the positive input on the LED, called the cathode. I'll arrange the LED so that the shorter negative leg, called the anode, is inserted into the neighboring empty row. Finally, I'll connect that row with the anode to the ground rail using a resistor. This completes the circuit. I'll plug in my device so it can power up while I work on my code. Now I can create a new .NET console app using the .NET 7 SDK. I'll name it Blink, then I'll set my location to the new directory and open it in VS Code. If you're using Visual Studio, you'll use the Create New Project dialog instead. Here's the empty console app in Visual Studio Code. Looking at the project file, there are no NuGet packages installed yet. In order to interact with the GPIO header, we'll need the system.device.gpio NuGet package. I'll open a terminal, and I'll use the .NET add package command to install it. If you're using Visual Studio, adding a package is done using the NuGet package manager. I'll search for the package online, and then install it. Now I'll write my code. To speed things up, I'll get the code from the Blink and LED tutorial in the .NET IoT docs and paste it into my program.cs. Let's review it. This using declaration creates an instance of the GPIO controller class. This class is used to interact with the GPIO header. A using declaration ensures that the instance is disposed of when the program exits. Next I'm calling the controller's open pin method to open a connection to pin 18 for output. Then I set a boolean variable LED on to true. 
This will be used to keep track of the LED state. Finally, I'm using a while loop to turn the LED on and off. The loop uses a ternary expression to set the LED state based on the value of LED on. The pin value dot high and dot low values written to the pin correspond to on and off. Then it waits for 1000 milliseconds, and finally it inverts the value of LED on. The loop runs indefinitely. Now I'll save and build. The app builds, so I'll deploy to my device as a self-contained app. If you need a reminder of how to do this, check out the previous video. I'm going to skip ahead here to save a little time. The app is deployed. I've opened another terminal window where I've connected to the device over SSH. I'll mark the file as executable and then I'll run it. It looks like my program is working. GPIO pin 18 is being toggled on and off and the LED is blinking. After a few seconds, I'll stop the app with control C. That's all there is to it. That's how to blink an LED with .NET. Remember earlier when I said that I think of this as the IoT equivalent of Hello World? This is actually a little bit better than Hello World because when combined with a relay like this, it has a real world application. A relay is an electromechanical switch that can be controlled by a small current. When the relay is energized, the internal magnetic switch closes. This way you can control another circuit that isn't connected directly to your device. This is especially useful for controlling AC devices like light bulbs and fans. To use the relay, I'll first connect jumper wires to the screw terminals on the control end of the relay. I've cleared my breadboard, and now I'll connect the DC positive jumper wire to one of the 5 volt pins on the device, and I'll connect the DC negative jumper wire to one of the ground pins. These connections power the relay. Finally, I'll connect the input jumper wire to pin 18, which is what will actuate the relay. I can test the relay now. It has an output LED we can observe. I'll run my app again, and I can see the LED on the relay is blinking. This means the relay is working. To show the relay in action, I could use an AC device like a light bulb, but for safety reasons, I'll use a small DC motor instead. Please don't try this with AC current unless you know what you're doing. I'll power my motor with this battery pack, and I'll mount the motor in this little bushing I've 3D printed. To make the spinny of the motor visible on camera, I'll attach this little 3D printed spinner to the motor shaft. Let's connect the battery to see it work. Now I'll connect the motor to the relay. The negative lead from the motor is connected directly to the battery pack. The positive lead from the motor is connected to the relay's common terminal. The relay's NO, or normally open, terminal is connected to the battery pack's positive lead. Note that the motor circuit is not connected directly to my Raspberry Pi. It's connected to the relay, which is controlled by the Pi. The relay just completes the motor's power circuit. My app as I've written it isn't really useful for controlling the motor because it toggles pin 18 every second. That's not really enough time to see the motor spin, so I'll modify the app to prompt the user to press enter to toggle the relay. Then I'll deploy my app again. I've redeployed the app and I've already got it running. Now I'll press enter to toggle the relay and close the battery circuit. The motor is spinning. I'll press enter again to stop the motor. That's all there is for this video. In the next video, I'll show you how to use the GPIO pins to read input. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.